Hey everyone, this is Rebel Spy bringing you uh, uh, Shadow Era commentary number five. Um, this is, is a Jericho vs. Uh, Gwyn deck, and, and uh, to be honest, I don't remember a whole, whole lot about this game. I, I looking at the the date on the file. I recorded this three days ago, generally after I um, play a game that I want to do a commentary on, I'll, I'll just, just go ahead and record the commentary, uh, just the video for, for it, um, um, and then I'll, I'll do the actual voiceover commentary later uh, with that video so that I can pause and go over it and stuff. And, uh, Played, I don't know, probably a hundred games of Shadow Era in, in the last three days, so I don't really remember this. Um, looking at the file name, I titled this, this uh, "When Things Go Wrong" and thinking about the possibilities. So I'm guessing. Uh, I, 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 I guess I kind of remember not really drawing any um, um, destroy. Arms play. I play four of those in this Jericho deck, and um, not really getting any destroy arms, which is kind of key versus Gwen. And I'm guessing he probably got some board control or something. But uh, let's, so let's dive into the game, and we'll, we'll see. Kind of check it out together. I'm, I'm sure it'll kind of come back back to me as, as, as we're watching. So he's going first and, and we're stacking some cards. Wonderful. Standard first few turns. And he plays a pool and uh, um, I'm basically looking to get out my wise and, and, and you know, clear the board with title wave if necessary. Um, I do throw, throw down a guy to, to go ahead and soak up a hit. Um, because Gwen can. can on a lot of damage late game. He does play a trap here on his third turn and kills my Blake. Um, Gwen can pile on a lot of damage with their bows and rapid fire and so soaking up a little bit of early damage from her Uh, you know, again, some decks I, I probably wouldn't play that early, Blake. Can I just take the hit on my hero? But uh, uh, so here, here for my three drop, I play, play a curse. That'll obviously help against his allies, but not any of his weapons. And he hits my, my hero for one. one. Uh, um, um, so, like I said, I'm, I'm looking to get out Wisens here on turn, turn four. Uh, um, let's, let's see. All right, sweet. I do. So that's going to give me some draw, he's, he's going to be able to, you know, probably take it out too shortly just because it's, their ability is going to wear out, but I'm going to try and use that to, to, to draw some cards and get 
SIM card advantage, and eventually take over the board and and use my uh, um, use my guy as to uh, uh, and my destroy arms, take out his weapons, and, and overrun him, essentially. Uh, um, kind of standard game plan there. Um, um, but but not, nothing much is happening. We're on a turn five, five, and I'll go ahead and draw with my wife, and and uh, toss out a guy to kill his trap, and, and then go ahead and uh, play a healing touch. I had three, three resources left after Nuke and his healing touch. I think I had a raven in hand or something, and I obviously didn't want that. I killed with the traps, so I had to toss out a Blake. And then and I had three resources left, and obviously no Jasmine or... Uh, all then, so I went ahead and killed up my hero a little bit. And, and uh, um, it looks like he's gonna go ahead and play a rapid fire, which is not good, because then when I destroy his, his bows, he'll have already at least had two shots with them versus uh, um, if he doesn't have rapid fire, he can only get, get one shot off before I, I destroy it, but obviously I, I didn't have a destroy arms, otherwise I would Played that with the other three resources instead of the healing card last turn. Um, um, so he's, he's already got me down to 14 health there. Uh, actually, it looks like 13 health because his Puna, of course, is going to hit me. So he's got me down to about 13 health. and. I've used one of my healing cards. I think in this build, I have maybe two of those. Maybe three. I don't. I don't. I don't not, not positive. Um, it, it changes depending on. On what, what the meta's like. So here I do throw out that Raven. I, I wanted to last turn, but couldn't because of the trap. And I also use my, my Jericho to kill those rapid fire. That way he does only get that one, one shot that I was talking about. Kind of. Crucial, and he hits me with his weapon, and, and his weapon, which is going to knock me down to eight life. Um, um, so already, uh, I guess we can kind of see why this is called. I'm going to pause it here.
or call it, see why it's called the way things are going wrong. Because you know, even though he doesn't have a huge, huge advantage, he, he hasn't steamrolled me with a, a you know Blake Alden, Beetle Demon Bo, Bo turn that into an ally. Um, Soul Seeker, Rapid Fire, you know, just he doesn't have the nuts, but um, it's still uh, uh, a fa- going fairly well um, for him. And my my, my Wizens wore out pretty quickly the durability, so I only got I think two draws with that, and I haven't been able to find find another one, and um, um, so I'm down to about 8 health, which is only obviously 2 hits with his bow, um, and and here's why I, oh, I, I think we get to why I called this, thinking about the possibilities this turn. Um, so let's see what I do. I think I play a healing card here, and, and here's why. Um, I actually have a lot better cards to play, um, and, I, and, and I'm at 8. I'm going to pause it here. I'm at, at eight, 8 health, um, which seems like that should normally be okay enough to, to to last for a while, and I think I had had um, uh, an Aeon in my my hand at this point, and maybe some other allies. Um, I've I've got some, some better cards. I would like to play than that healing card. Um, in fact, uh, uh, an Aeon would be huge right here. Um, um, kind of take over the board and and start um, putting some damage on him. But the, the problem is with me at eight health. If he hit, draws a rapid fire and plays it on his turn, I I don't get to use Jericho to remove it until my turn. And with eight health, he hits me twice with Soul. Seeker, I lose instantly. So, um, one, one kind of key, key thing a lot, a lot of, uh, you, you need to do, do a lot of when you are playing at the top level is think, what can he do on, on his turn? It's not, not just what's the best move for me, but it's, it's what's the best move for me based on what he's doing. Ideally, an Aeon right here would be a much, much better play than healing for. But, but, if he draws a rapid fire, or if he already has one as the, one of the two cards in his hand, um, then, and I'm at 8 health, then on his turn, he drops it, hits me twice, game over. So thinking about what sort of possibilities could he do, if, if Rapid Fire didn't exist as a card, I'd know he, he, he can't really do 8 damage to me on, on my turn. Um, he could, I guess, maybe... It hit me for four with his bow and hit, hit me for one with his poo and that's five and do a special delivery for, for three. So there's another way, way he could get eight. Um, you know, so there's uh, a couple different ways he could do it. But if, if I was at nine, Right here, nine health. I absolutely wouldn't be playing this healing touch. 
until next turn. Because I can't really think, think of a way he's going to... Well, I mean, obviously, I, I should revise that. If I'm at 10 health. Because obviously he can do 9 damage because he, he can do the rapid fire to hit me for 8 and, and then poo and hit me for 1 makes 9. If I'm at 10 health here, um, um, I'm not going to, to play that healing touch. I'm, I'm going to play a better card, and then when he, he knocks me down, down to 10 or less, then I'm going to go ahead and play the healing touch. But it's thinking about what, what can he do? What's the maximum amount of damage? And I, I, I think about that a lot. What's the maximum amount? Of damage he can do here. Um, when I'm comparing, do I go after his allies? Do I go after his hero? What am I, I going to do this turn to see if I can win next turn? Is he going to be able to win next turn? What do I need to do to stop that? So here I determine, oh, okay, I'm at 8 health. Uh, a rapid fire kills me here. I've got to heal up above 10. Um, um, so I do that. I play my healing touch. And, and um, I go ahead and kill this guy off, off with my raven. And actually, I, I guess 9, I was correct in saying... I need to be at 9 or above because I was going to kill it was pooing here. Um, and, and then and my other three resources are wasted. I much rather would have played an Aeon for the full, full 6 had, had two guys on, on board. Um, now here, uh, it is where it sucks. He plays a, a he, here's uh, the next thing that goes wrong. He, he plays a, a Night Prowler and, and steals from my hand and a, a King's Pride. And the king's pride, I was really counting on because what it was going to do here was give my, my Jasmine an extra health, give her two, two extra attack, and it was going to help protect my hero. So every time he right here if my Jasmine had one, one extra health he can't take her out next turn because she'd have five health left and because um, it would have boosted her to seven she just took two as a defense shot she'd be at, she's at five right now and and next turn, he can only hit her for four. But since I don't have that king's pride, he can shoot her, kill her, gain three life, and I lose my board control again. So that king's pride is huge, giving Jasmine that extra health. Of course, giving her two extra attack is nice. And then every time he hits my hero, he only does two with Soul Seeker, one with Beetle Demon Bow, and it doesn't matter so much that my, my health is only at 8 or 12 or whatever, because that's going to absorb two damage per attack, and he, I know he has no way to destroy that. But of course, of course he stole that on his 
is turned with a soul seeker, so all of that is kind of a, a moot point. Um, um, I do go ahead and drop another raven so that when he, he kills one of them, um, um, I will still be able to, to do the board control. And he does do the rapid fire and and um, he does indeed attack my hero twice, or just just once. That's, that's right, because I had gotten his, his bow down, um, 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 and got, gotten his bow down and durability. You see, his you can tell I can't remember this game uh, quite well, but I had gotten his boat down to one durability knowing then if he did play rapid fire well, he could still only hit me once because that would use up all his resources to play that. And so he does play the rapid fire um, but it's kind of a waste of a turn because it, it, his bow destroys due to the durability, and then I just, just remove it with Jericho on my, my turn. And I go ahead and hit him with both my Ravens and my Poon. Um... So, um, um, oh, and, and and that explains why I, I did, did attack, attack him with the raven. Because um, under a normal circumstance, I mean, had his bow had more than two durability a few turns ago, I wouldn't have attacked him with my raven. By attacking him with my raven, it knocks her from six health to four, which means he can shoot and kill her on his his turn. Why would I want want to do that? Normally, I'd go ahead and pass on that that attack, but but I need to... to, um, That way I can keep raven on the board for for board control. in case he plays any allies or anything. But I need to get that bow down to one durability. That way, even if he plays a rapid fire, he can't kill my hero, which is exactly what, what happened. So thinking about those possibilities, thinking about, oh, okay, he, he's, if he plays rapid fire, he can, he can take out my hero, which has eight health, back down to 8 health after the heal, he knocked him back down to 8, he, a rapid fire could still kill me so oh, I need to knock his bow out or at least down to 1 durability so a rapid fire he, he can still only shoot once, thinking about what is it that he can do uh, what sort of possible are we looking at? So he does play a Jasmine, and, and I think about leaving her here, but I I don't really want her to um, do her nice little, little uh, stunning heart trick. And, and uh, I, I think think about have my my poo in here attack is here, but I think, think I do decide to go ahead and take out the, the jasmine so that she doesn't shake her fanny and stun one of my guys. Uh, 
give him, give him the nice, nice goo goo eyes. And so, so, so um, she dies, and, and um, we're at he, he plays my king's fight against me, jerk. Um, and, and I'm at four health. I know, um, um, I know, I know there's basically several ways I, I do finally draw, draw, destroy arms. And here's why I play it. Let me pause right here. Uh, because it seems, seems like, hey, if, if you've got to destroy arms, why aren't I saving that, that for a weapon? At this point, um, I, had, I had drawn a destroy arms, and I'm again thinking about the possibilities. If he draws a soul seeker right here, boom, he sh shoots my hero for four, game over. I lose. Um, there's no point in saving the destroy arms. If he plays a beetle demon bow, then, um, and he shoots my hero, then and that only does three damage. And I, I um, I still have one health left. And I don't need the destroy arms because I can take out the beetle demon bow with all of my, my guys that are on the board now. With all, all their um, um, they will kill off its durability. So I play uh, uh, an Alden plus all Next turn, if he plays a beetle demon bow, bow and knocks me down to one, I'm going to kill him next, next turn. With all, all my, my allies, he has no way to clear all those allies. Um, so I, I knock, knock him down to three, three health. Pretty much the, the only thing that can win in the game here is a soul seeker and he's already played two, two so if, if, he, if he draws one of his other two in his next card he can play it and toss it down and I lose the game so let's see we put an end of the forest, which will let him stall for a turn and hope to draw that soul seeker. So uh, I can't attack him. I don't get an armor. I do finally get a Wizens, which I use, and don't get anything useful. So let's see if he gets his soul seeker. He plays a special delivery, which does three, and I'm down to one health. And then uh, uh, that's game over. Um, he's at three health, and I've got plenty of allies on the table, which can do that much damage. Um, so I do go ahead. 
and kill him. Um, so there was a couple key points in there where I'm thinking about what could happen here, what could he play, what, how much health do I need to be at? so that I don't, don't die. And, and um, what, what can I do to prevent those, those plays? Oh, his, his, um, he can play rapid, rapid fire and kill me at 8, eight health. I guess I better not play my A on play my stupid healing card and then leave three resources unused. Oh. He can kill me with... He gets me back down to eight and he can kill me with a, a, a rapid fire again. Well, I'll go ahead and attack his bow, something I normally wouldn't do because it makes it so he can kill me and heal. I'll go ahead and attack his bow to get his durability down so that he can't kill me. Oh, he can. Um, play a soul seeker and kill me any anyway, or he can play beetle demon bow, which won't kill me, and I'll kill him next next turn. I might as well play my destroy arms to kill off off the armor, that way I can do enough damage to kill him next turn. There's no point in saving it. So thinking about those possibilities, what can he play? Do I need to save this to destroy arms? Do I need to attack him with my raven? Do I need to play this healing card. There was multiple instances there where I'm thinking not, not about what's the best place for me. Well, I am, but I'm thinking about what's the best play for me based on what he's doing. Uh, Kind of like in poker, you're you're not only playing your cards, you're, you're playing their cards, and and that's that's where it helps to really be kind of comfortable with the game, to know know a lot about the possibilities, to have played a lot of games and have experience and know kind of what's be in their deck and what what sort of the best plays are going to be for them, and that, that way you can kind of prepare for the worst and make your best best decisions based on the possibilities. So, so I encourage all you you guys to be thinking about the possibilities. And, and I hope you enjoy the